All right, let's go. Ayo, we're three hot guys sharing our opinions because we're special and different. Gold medals, we're winning. Can't help it if we're burdened by our intellect. You can play checkers while we pretend we know the rules to chess. The council has spoken, and we are the chosen. Your nose is broken because I broke it. Ouch, this sucks. Welcome, 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 everybody, to the first episode of Will of the Councils. I am here with the Councils. My name is Joseph. I've got Danny in the booth. Hello. And I've got Jordan as far away as possible. Uh, yeah, that's me. I hope you all are doing uh, doing good today. How's your week been? Uh, uh, it's fine. Well, Jordan, why don't you start? Yeah, 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 I'll start. It's fine. It's the new year. Things are going well. Job is going good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have much to say here. I'm, it's Did good. you all get good, here? I, I got a conversation starter for you, and feel free to steal this for those sure. of you at home. You know, um, what did you get for Christmas? What was your Ooh. your apex gift? You, the single gift that defined your holiday season. Well, you know what? I guess I'll start off on this one. Uh, I got an Elgato Stream Deck. Because oh, I do stream. wow. You're like a real streamer now. I'm like a real streamer now. And I have already edited the soundboard to have two different fart sounds on it. So Good priorities. Are you? Yep. I, I have terrible <laughs> news. Did you see that they just got rid of the implied nudity guidelines so you can't do the uh, the sensor bar Ooh. stream? Ah, darn. Yes. You know what? Everybody wanted to see a six-foot husky hairy man with a black bar over his genitals so I mean, sorry I everybody did. <laughs> <Not gonna lie. laughs> uh, well, yeah whatever man it's fine danny what'd you get so i have been playing a lot of uh pikmin 4 uh and i did not get that for christmas i've been playing it through the holiday season but i did get a uh ochi plush Ooh. and it's uh, ochi's the little dog you can play as or uh have as your companion in Pikmin 4 and this little plushie I got for Christmas. It is the best thing I got for Christmas, period. Oh, gee, it's that's my doggy. That's my baby. That's my, that's my funny little honey. That's my freaking... Shout out Silly Stew. Oh, good stuff. Um, my my most quality gift received was um, my beautiful wife got me a whole bunch of historical candy. So it was like the candy that people would be eating in the 1800s, you know, when Aww. they didn't know that like sugar was bad for you. I, the one from the 1700s <laughs> is literally just sugar. It's just big clumps of sugar. And uh, that's just um, that's just the way it is. I've been really enjoying it. Um, and I will not be seeing a dentist this year. So that is the most Joseph um christmas gift i will say yeah it sounds like the most joseph joseph christmas gift ever and i have a question a lot of old candy has like weird flavors like anise i mean that's basically just black licorice but like is it those weird spices or is it just like sugar there are some there are some weird spices in it um there, a lot of you know the thing that i learned was that marshmallow the flavor um is actually just vanilla and prior to the invention of like vanilla and the gelatin that makes up what we now know as a marshmallow, a marshmallow was a plant and you were eating just like this plant flavored candy. And I was like, oh no, disgusting. I get as much sugar in here as possible. Get as much vanilla in here as possible. <laughs> the American <laughs> way. People, ah, people back in the old nice, days, brother. though, I do have to say they it's it's great to know that the like gluttonous consumptive habits of americans you know it dates all the way back to our inception we were we were snacking on treats as long as we could um i oh the number one thing i i ate was a sugar plum have you ever had one of those no no do you know what a sugar no. plum is I it not. is not a I plum just, no it is a hazelnut that is wrapped enveloped in a big ball of sugar <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah the plum refers to the shape that the sugar is compressed into it has nothing to do with any sort of fruit no healthy nothing oh awesome. nice <laughs> that is the best uh but we're not here to talk about sugary fruits we're here to talk about actual fruits that's my transition into the actual episode 
So oh, nice. Let's uh, let's just introduce the listener to how we're going to do this. We're going to be dealing with three arguments online, and we will be passing the will of the council after some deliberation. And we're going to begin with this one, which comes from r slash am I the asshole user M F pomegranate. So let me read this one out for you real quick. I, 20F, and my friend Lucy, 23F, have been drifting apart recently as she's become obsessed with TikTok poetry and letting it dictate her life and relationships. The worst part was when she broke up with her boyfriend after he didn't open the pomegranate in a delicate way. Motherfucker, it's a pomegranate. By the way, already this is off to a great start. I love MF, it's a pomegranate. Uh, you can just tell that it's a white person who's writing this and is so frustrated <laughs> that they have to use MF. Yeah. <laughs> the the people at home won't be able to see this, uh, or unless they maybe find the post, but uh, I love that pomegranate is misspelled in just this one. They got so mad they typed it like granite. Oh, you're right. You're right. It's like and I T E. Pomegranate <laughs> everywhere else in here is spelled correctly, granate. And in the username, but here it's, it's a pomegranite. <laughs> All right, moving on. She came to me crying about it because Josh had called her deranged. I told her I agree. We didn't talk like we used to for a few months or so until she told me she'd met someone on a dating app and wanted me to come have a few drinks with him on their first date. I said, sure. This guy, Max, 20s, seemed nice. At one point, I asked what they were doing after this. He said, well, if all goes well, they'll go back to her place and mentioned something about how she'd brought food to make a fruit and cheese plate and that she'd need his artist hands to cut the pomegranate. I said, oh, just so you know, this pomegranate is a test. <laughs> if you want this to work, you'll be as gentle with the fruit as possible. She broke up with her ex over this. He looked at me like I had two heads, asked if I was serious. I said yes. He said he knew she liked poetry and he didn't know that she was that intense about it. When she got back, everything went well until it was time for them to leave. She called me a few hours later asking what I said to Max. Apparently, as he was cutting the fruit, he accidentally squished a grape and said, oops, I hope you don't break up with me. Ha ha. And it caused an argument where he told Lucy I had warned him about the test. We got into an argument. I said, Lucy, if you want to base your relationships on shitty TikTok poetry, go ahead. You'll be hard pressed to find someone who fits all your weird expectations. She hung up and texted me a long paragraph about her past relationships and how poetry is giving her boundaries and that I'm a bad friend for making fun of her. I've never made fun of her just pointed out the real life isn't poetry am i the asshole all right who wants to go first on this one i know you do i know you do I, oh. really, yeah you gotta give us your I, opinion I, I, you got okay it. all right so i like to i like to think about things in terms of like realistic expectations of men okay mm-hmm. Um, because there are good and valid realistic expe- expectations of men out there, right? Like men in relationships should not, you know, allow the woman to be like the project manager of the household and like, you know, spend all their time at work while the woman spends all the time like planning out the kids piano lessons or all that stuff, right? Like that's a, that's a not wanting your, you not wanting your man to be like just constantly pawning off all the project management stuff of the household. That's like a realistic expectation of men, right? You know, Mm -hmm. there are plenty valid things that as a woman, you can ask a man to do. And I think that's, you know, that's good. That's healthy for a relationship, right? Now I think setting up a test in terms of the pomegranate cutting is a little weird. It's bizarre, you know, letting TikTok dictate your relationship advice. (laughs) What? I know. Why? (laughs) <laughs> but but it is very easy in these Am I the Asshole posts to side with the person that is writing them, right? Because that's why they're posting them in the first place. They Because they're convinced they're correct. Exactly. Right. They want validation. Correct. They, they want, want you to say, oh, wow, you're a genius. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, oh, you're okay. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I always try to look at these posts as much in a vacuum as I can. Because some of them you just can't, right? Some of them are mm-hmm. so out there that it's like, wow, you you are absolutely not the asshole in this. But for this one, I want to agree with this person because I do think this behavior is extremely strange. However, I am hard-pressed to do so because I think this person has has stepped over the lane just a little bit, right? Like, this is a weird quirk 
that this person does testing their potential partners with a pomegranate, I think is bizarre. Um, but I think also, you know, talking about this person's, um, so something that's important to them and revealing it to what is basically a stranger at this point, I think it's just a little weird. I think it kind of steps over the lane a little bit. So I think in this case, they are the asshole a tiny bit. Ooh. Jordan, yes. you are insane. I know. And wow. regrettably, 100% correct. Woo-hoo! I have the Woo! exact same take. I think the pomegranate thing is insane. I think once you start setting up little traps for your date, like just go watch Scooby Doo. Like you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to engineer a situation where you can just be like, "Oh no, man." This person is like some sort of evil psychopath based on TikTok phrenology. Uh, And let's be honest, the pomegranate thing is like, it's gendered in a way. It's like, oh, pomegranates are delicate. And I want to know that you'll be you'll be kind with my delicate body. It's weird, right? But this is one of the worst friends I've ever seen in my life. Right. She's like constantly dismissive of this. Um, despite the fact that while it's annoying as hell, it is completely harmless. Uh, she's uh, the, the scenarios where she's like, I never said that I was making fun of her. I just said that this thing that she really likes is wrong and that she's insane. It's like, what are you talking about? And I'm sorry. I, I don't really know the dynamics of two women talking to each other, but if, if it was two guys talking to each other and setting up a test and there was a third woman involved, and my friend leaned over to the woman and said, just so you know, there's about to be a test coming up, and explained how crazy I was behind my back, I would be livid. I can't believe this woman is so mean to her friend. The friend is, of course, insane. We can all agree on that. But the, you you can't be this mean to your friend. Right. I would agree. Actually, I have a question for you guys on this one. Have you ever? Mm. Have you ever tested a potential partner have you ever done this no yes no yes uh yeah, oh, you, have, <laughs> you have in in oh, uh, my, of course you're oh, an insane person well you know you know the context is it was in high school because i was like oh this is how you tell i had read some article that was like you know give your partner chocolate or something and then like scrutinize how they eat it <laughs> people just need to invent <laughs> problems is it, uh, they they find a good relationship and they're like we have to figure out a problem with this relationship they're opening their cottage cheese container the wrong way um there's got to be an ick somewhere here right yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> manufactured x so Danny good. where you landed on this so I, I i'm conflicted you know i've heard your, both of your opinions now and at first, I think I had the kind of um, the obvious opinion. This? Yeah, yeah, the quote unquote obvious opinion of like, oh, well, like this person has written this in a way to make me kind of feel bad about them expressing, of course, this person's weird pomegranate test, which of course is weird. So that feeling drifts my into myself, like, oh, well, yeah, it, that's 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 really rude. And but at the same time, I'm now looking at this like. Oh my god, yeah. She just like gave this guy the heads up and butted herself into this conversation that had literally nothing to do with yep, her. Yep. Like, why even bring it up? Is are you mad about it? Like and, and then le- we haven't talked much about the guy in this scenario <laughs> who made the worst oh comment my god. ever. This this guy, by the way, Oops, th- hope you don't break up with me. Dog, what's wrong with you? <laughs> this guy, you know, I I know she says he seems nice. Uh, you did actually dot. This is putting faith in the pomegranate test because what? he he screwed this one up so bad. Like, make something up is like, oops, sorry, your friend told me you're crazy. Haha, ha, don't break up with me. Like, how are you that bad? Come on. But but see, that's the thing. That's the thing, though. Did she just save her friend? From a shitty relationship. Ooh, we're getting next right? level. Like, like, did did she dodge a bullet because this guy made a shitty joke about the thing she likes? If she if he really liked her, he would be like, Oh, what a what a cool thing. I'd love to do this dumb test. I don't know, you right? Like, and clearly like would enjoy it or support it or whatever. And instead, he makes some dumb comment like, Huh, hope you don't break up with me, bro. <laughs> like, come on, man, what are you doing here? All right, I I I think we could call it on this one. Uh let's put it to a vote. Decision time. Jordan. 
is the storyteller the asshole? 100%. Yeah, for sure. Danny, is the storyteller the asshole? Unfortunately, even uh, considering the guy's dumb comment, I have to agree. She is the asshole. And I agree as well. The council has spoken. What would what would your guys' test be? Like, if you had to test, like, your partners right now, what would, my test would be, you gotta tell me what Robot Masters in Mega Man 2, like, what weapons beat them, you know? That's that's my test. If you if you can't tell me what the weaknesses of every robot master in Mega Man Two is, then we gotta break up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would never test a woman because they would they would all pass. They would all pass. That's right, baby. All right, you ready to move on to the uh, next one? Let's do it. All right, this next one once again comes from R slash Am I the asshole? And this is a this is a two parter. So we'll do the first part first. Um. Am I the asshole for not letting my father give my son an iPad? And I just want to let you know, this is a locked discussion on Reddit, which should set the stage pretty well. Awesome. I, 30, have two kids, Arthur and Lucy. That's four and seven months. When my son was a baby, my husband, 32M, and I decided we wouldn't give our children any gadgets, phones, tablets, or computers until they were at least nine. Let me pause for a second. How do you all feel about that? Good. Yeah, that's uh, no, I 100%. I, I I agree. I think you have to balance it, right? But mm-hmm. um, it, it's it's a hard judgment call for parents. I get it, but I I do agree that you ha- you gotta try to limit it in some ways. You know? Yeah, I know. I know some people who like let them on an iPad, but they intentionally keep it at about five percent battery. So they go, oh, you know, this thing only works for like twenty minutes a day. You know, I I think. I think it's a fine boundary to be like, we're going to limit your screen time as much as possible. These kids don't need to have social media disease yet. Yeah, I agree. Like, ever since I heard about, like, the Instagram files, or I don't know, it was like that 60-minute special or whatever. I don't remember exactly what it was called. But basically how, like, internal documents talk about how Instagram is actually designed to make you feel like shit. Like, my <laughs> oh, of relationship with social media has been completely irrevocably changed since then. Like, I used to be a chronically online person on social media. Used and, to be. Uh, uh, well, hey, like, <laughs> look, I used to be on Facebook and Instagram a lot. There we go. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I. Yeah. That's what I mean. And I don't know. I just can't. I can't do it anymore. Like, I know how that stuff is designed to make you feel like shit, and it just does make you feel like shit. So I don't know. I am. I used to be the type of person that's like, ah, oh, you know, kids need as much free will as possible, blah, blah. And now, like, I, I realize now how damaging the internet can be. And it's like, nah, you do not yeah. need, you do not need a smartphone. I'm sorry to, the, like, the 13-year-old anarchists in the audience, but uh, bedtime <laughs> is important. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> All so right. True. Bedtime and showers, folks. Whoa, let's not, <laughs> let's not get too crazy here. All right, continuing. I worked as a babysitter in my early 20s, and many of the kids I'd take care of were glued to iPads. They had no social skills, refused to go out, were nightmares to be around when they didn't have their gadgets. I don't like judging other parents, and I get how overwhelming children can be, but I'm not going to raise my kids like that. My dad, 63M, is dating Shelly, 37F. First off... <laughs> <laughs> just oh, snuck that in there did you I let that one slip. sorry sorry okay Go okay ahead. her sister had her third child earlier this year oh just a sec real quick and the daughter is 30 and shelly is 37 oh good okay i'm sure that they have a great relationship mm-hmm. her sister had her third child earlier this year and gave her older kids an ipad to distract them while she focused on the baby my father and shelly thought that was a great idea since lucy was born my father has been busy trying to convince me to get arthur an ipad he says this would be a great way to keep him busy while i take care of the baby and to make parenting less of a struggle for me and my husband we're not struggling things aren't perfect but we're happy and healthy without ipads when i try to express this to my dad he ignores me i've been declining his advice all year he finally stopped bringing it up about about a month ago and I thought it was over. Last week he and Shelly got back from a trip abroad. I went to their place to pick up some things I'd asked them to get when I noticed an iPad box in one of their suitcases. Shelly confirmed they'd gotten it as a Christmas gift for Arthur. When my father tried to deny it, it became clear they planned on giving it to him behind my back. As calmly as I could, I said I don't care who they give the iPad to, but it can't be Arthur. We had a huge fight. I told them my fam- family wouldn't be attending Christmas. My aunt is hosting unless they promise not to give Arthur the iPad. Both my father and Shelly are furious. They're calling me ungrateful and insist- they're trying to help me and my husband. My father is angry that I'm denying Arthur an expensive gift that many people don't have access to 
too. Me and my husband aren't budging, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel like I'm overreacting. I don't want to spend Lucy's first Christmas without the rest of my family. And when I think about that, it feels like an awful hill to die on. Am I the asshole? Danny, you want to take the first crack at this? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. T- to me, this one's so insanely obvious, at least for me. Like, no, you are not the asshole. What the My heck? Goat. What is yeah, going yeah. on? What? It's like, just imagine trying to police, you know, someone's parenting decisions and then being like, you know, after they're like, no, no, thank you. No, really, I, 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 we're okay. We don't want to do that. Then being like, well, we'll just do it anyway. Hey, jerk off. I'm trying to parent my own kid here. I don't need you, like, backdooring my life to, <laughs> to give my kid an iPad. Get out of here. Uh, I'm not yeah. to put, like, a like a penis-shaped pipe in my mouth and play Freud, but this is, like, <laughs> there's so much going on in this one that it, it's, it's easy to just immediately zone in on, no, the kid should not have an iPad. Like, my father is dating a woman 30 years younger than him. Uh, you know, she is kind of an absent parent, like big fucking surprise. Uh, the dad isn't oh, great shocker. at raising a kid at age 63. Um, the dad <laughs> makes, the dad makes the comment, uh, you're being ungrateful. Many people don't have access to an iPad. And like, I get That's that. Awesome, I get that for way. like an iPhone, right? Like you need an iPhone to like exist in, you know, civilized society. You need some kind of smartphone. You don't need a fucking iPad. <laughs> like, come yeah. on. Wrong. Wrong. I need to play my iPad games now. Uh, and then, I mean, my favorite one is that they were like, uh, hey, sorry, you know, we can't come to Christmas if you're going to, like, go behind our back and give them a a, uh, a toy. And the, the dad's like, okay. It's like, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, what the heck? Uh, and, and the fact that <laughs> he denied it first. Yeah, he said, he knows that it's wrong. He knows she doesn't want it. <laughs> She's like, no, I'm going to I'm gonna. Is that a him. gift for Arthur? No. <laughs> no, it's for uh, <laughs> uh, Okay, you got me. Give him the iPad. <laughs> Quick. So uh. this, this mentality is a product <laughs> of a Christmas story. You guys ever oh. watch a Christmas story? Oh, I oh, watch. Dude. It, you know what? You yes. uh, God, how are you this right so often? I've immediately uh, connected I all know. these thoughts. I Go know. for it, buddy. So for the for the listeners at home, <laughs> a Christmas story is probably my favorite Christmas movie. You know, mm-hmm. it's a kind of a golden age of capitalism time frame. It's like the forties or whatever, you know. It's very, very old. But it's very like made during like the Reagan boom, so like everyone's like doing okay. Yeah, exactly right. So yeah, um, you know, in this movie, there the the fabled Christmas gift that Ralphie wants so bad is the Red Rider BB gun, right? Ugh. And you know, the mom says, "Oh, you'll shoot your eye out," and the teacher says, "You'll shoot your eye out." You know, no, no. Santa says, "You'll shoot your eye out," but then the dad gets the Christmas gift anyway, and yeah. then it's you know <laughs> he gets him the Red Rider BB gun, and you know all is well. And, you know, the movie is like, you know, it's so much better because he got the gift he wanted and everything. But everybody forgets about the part where he literally did shoot himself in the face with the fucking gun. That's the best part of the movie. I know. It's the best part of the movie. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I don't know. The, this whole, the, the like, oh, you know, I'm going to, I'm the better, you know, savior of your of the child's life because I'm getting you the Red Rider iPad that shoots your eye out with social media depression. <laughs> it shoots your shoots your frontal lobe out. <laughs> right. Right. Instead I, of instead of going blind in one eye, you start calling yourself a traditionalist anti-Vatican II Catholic at age 11. <laughs> Digital fentanyl straight to your brain. No, yeah, no, that's a perfect analogy. That's a perfect yeah. analogy. Uh, it's yeah, basically it's, it's basically the 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 poster is not the asshole is what I'm getting at like clearly like I'm just obviously yeah, yeah. I'm trying to like look at it from all the angles and I, I understand that the the dad is so set in his ways that he is doing the right thing but he's not the asshole because he refuses to empathize with this right you just refuse to put yourself in your parents shoes also the biggest thing it gets me and it gets me and I'm sorry to keep going on this but the last thing that I'll say is the assumption that you're parents or that your your child as parents are struggling that is what kills me like parenting is hard as hell in general but the assumption mm-hmm. that they're struggling like that sucks that just really sucks 
Oh, yeah. He just, like, thinks that they're sucking. He's like, oh, I bet you're having trouble. Get, <laughs> shove an iPad in that thing's face, and <laughs> you'll be much better. It's uh, daughter. Be less present with your children. <laughs> it does kind of give away the goat, though. When he's like, um, it, you know, it's it's this type of language that, like, if you've ever had like a family member who acts like this, you just know instantly what's going on here. When he's like, you should be grateful for this bad gift. Like, if you've ever had a similar scenario with any like family member of yours, what's happening here is the dad is trying to show off that he's like super rich and that like he and his 30 year old yes! wife he and his 30 yep. year old wife have figured out how to parent because they have an ipad and they can functionally ignore the kid and he's trying to be like you know my way is the best way you know here's both a representation of that in that we have a kid that we're raising this way and here's a representation of that in that the world is a meritocracy and i'm wealthy enough to give you a gift that many don't have access to and it's just like oh brother these guys are doing fine oh, brother this guy stinks oh my god well you should accept this gift because me and my wife who's half my age <laughs> is getting it for you did I mention oh she's God. half my age? <laughs> I, I, you know what? I will say, I, what if you give Shelly an iPad? He's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, fu fuck the kids. Get the get. She probably does. He's like, you know, he's what? What do sixty-five year olds talk about? He's trying to like figure out coordinates to Epstein's Island, and she's like, oh, honey, we should go to Outback. And he's like, uh, just go play Fruit Ninja for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do they still have Flappy Bird? Is that still there? Get that thing. Shelly, go thing. play Flappy Bird. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Um, I think this one should be a pretty easy vote. Decision time. Let's uh, let's begin it. Uh, Danny, is this poster the asshole? No, this poster is not the asshole. Jordan? This, you know what, I'm going to say this right now. This might be the clearest, most obvious no we might have on this show. I'm, it's bold to claim that on episode one, but no, this poster is not the asshole. And regrettably, I got to agree. That is a 3-0. The council has spoken. Now, I will say this one comes with a little bit of an update. Uh, so there is an additional post after this person Ooh. follows Reddit's advice. I love these updates because usually what happens is someone will follow Reddit's awful advice, which is like, you should let them know that you're actually child free or like some insane thing that like only Reddit cares <laughs> about. Um, and then it ruins their life. But uh, this one is, it says, update. Thank you all for reassuring me. Since my post last week, a few things happened. Uh, I told my father we'd come to my aunt's place for Christmas and accept the iPad on the condition that he didn't let Arthur see it. Our plan was to tell him Grandpa had gotten him a gift for when he got bigger. He said he wanted a Hot Wheels track for Christmas, so my husband and I bought it for him and offered to have my dad gift it to him instead. I expected my father to agree. Instead, he accused me and my husband of not trusting him and Shelly and denying Arthur something he'd spent money on. He also denied our racetrack idea, saying he had the right to decide what he wanted to get for his kid. I hung up on him and told my aunt we weren't coming for Christmas. It turns out mine and my kid's presences were more important to her and my cousins than my father's. My aunt threatened to ban him unless they didn't give Arthur the iPad. He oh, shit. says, I, uh, after a small fight and a crying fit, my father apologized and asked what he could get my son for Christmas. I gave him ideas. He ignored all of them and got him a pair of socks. Whatever. The kid's four. He loved it. My father and Shelly gave the iPad to her sister's kids. They now have two. I know that because Shelly made a point of telling Arthur in front of me that her nephews got the best gift ever, and she was sorry he couldn't have the same thing. Arthur kept playing with Legos. He either didn't listen or didn't care. Good stuff all around. I'm sorry. Wow. Like, the Hot Wheels... Like, okay. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's going to be a point of this show, is to figure out what we would do in that situation. But, like... Hey, why don't you know he really wants a Hot Wheels track? We're gonna give you this Hot Wheels track to give to him, and that's like that is such a good resolution to this. This is like the least assholeish Reddit poster ever. Like, there's no way that this person could be the. I'm like, I, I'm I'm blown away. I'm like actually blown and, away. Oh, and also, let's not forget that this kid is four years four! old. It's a four year old. Like, oh my god. 
he wants the Legos, man. <laughs> God, please let them enjoy something physical, not on the internet for as long as they can. God. It's not going to last forever. Ugh. All right, uh, folks, please go back onto the internet and subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> 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 okay, this one is from Am I the Asshole once again. Uh, except this is from an Am I the Asshole offshoot subreddit where you can specifically post interpersonal com uh, conflicts. So uh, you know this one's going to be a beggar. Oh, good. Awesome. Okay. Am I the asshole for withdrawing wife privileges from my boyfriend until he proposes to me? All right. What? So this you're gonna have to this one you're gonna have to pay attention. Okay, okay. okay. My 29F boyfriend 31M have been together for seven years now. I voiced that I wanted to be engaged before the four year mark. He agreed at the time. When we were half a year from reaching our fourth year anniversary, I revisited the topic of marriage and told him I was expecting to get married. He was finishing up his master's program at the time, but said he wanted to get out of student debt again and get his finances in order, so I bit my tongue and understood we are partners. I can meet him halfway. He earns good money. We moved in together two years into our relationship, did long distance when he was in the master's program. My job is remote, so I moved into his hometown three hours away from the OG. I've been seeing all my friends and cousins get married. And it's hard to feel happy on such a joyous occasion uh, when your ring finger feels so empty and everyone starts asking you. Lately, my partner has been thriving in work and enjoying his new life, and it's almost as if he forgot about our goals. When I initiated a discussion mm. again, I could see he was dragging his feet. He didn't have enough money for a ring when he could very well buy the motorbike he always wanted since he was a kid. He said our life mm. is good. Why do we need a stamp of validation from the world? You are on one health insurance, so what's the point? All of this left me heartbroken. Why don't I deserve to be his wife after being his GF for so long? Does he not love me enough to make a romantic gesture for me? I talked to my sister who got engaged two years into her relationship, and her approach was simple yet effective. She told me withdraw all wife privileges from him until I get that title. He has to earn me. Not cleaning and cooking for him, moving out, not paying for his expenses sometimes, stuff like that. My boyfriend got mad when I didn't renew our lease with him. He told me that's a very poor way of handling things, and we need this constant in our life to preserve that intimacy. So. Wow. Am I the asshole? Okay. Ooh. You know what? I think women should do anything. That's I think women can do anything. Okay, here's here's the deal. How I'm gonna how I'm gonna approach this is Joseph, we started the first two. Why don't you go ahead and start this one? I'm curious yeah. to see what your opinion is on this. I am pretty sure that these two are not dating. I'm pretty sure that what? secretly these two are not in a relationship. Like, what is going on here? W okay, wait a minute. Are you metagaming the Reddit posts? No, Why I are just... Are you metagaming the Reddit posts? I just don't <laughs> understand. She, he's, she's like, yeah, you know, we're living together. Um, I cook and clean for him. There's nothing in here about, like, sex. And in the comments, she's like, eh, you know, we don't... We, we aren't, like, physically intimate. And it's like... I don't think you. I think you two are just roommates. Oh yeah, you're dating a roommate. Yeah, oh, no. Up. I, I mean, I think this one is obvious. This guy sucks. Oh, this guy. 100%, 100%. This guy is like one of the one of the worst of all time. He. I. I'm sorry. I can't get a wedding. I have to buy this motorbike I wanted since I was a kid. Dog. Come yeah. on. Yeah. You know. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Like. You, both parties are allowed to have an expectation of a relationship, yep. you know, and both parties are allowed to say, hey, I thought we like this was a common goal we had when we got together. Right. And like, for instance, you know, my wife and I, I'm a happily married man. I can I can relate this to my relationship. My wife and I had a, um, you know, have a goal to travel, right? And currently mm -hmm. we are childless. Um, and we had a trip coming up to see some family members over in the EU, okay? Um, mm -hmm. And lately I've been getting a little cold feet about going on the trip. Because um, traveling is a burden for me. I don't like being on planes. It makes me really sick. I get bad motion yeah, sickness. Yeah, yeah. And it's a lot of money. Blah, blah, blah. I could go along the, down the line of excuses, right? But, she, you know, I told her this and she was upset by that. You know, that like, well, I thought we were going to go. I thought we were going to travel. Now's a good time in our life to do that. And that was an expectation that I had is that we were going to travel a lot. And I was like, you know, I talked about my opinions on it and all this. Well, basically what I'm getting at is she voiced a, realist, a realistic expectation of our, of our relationship. And, you know, I should 
you know, I guess not coalesce isn't the word because I'm not like, you know, capitulating to my wife, but basically I compromise on them. Like, yeah, we wanted to go travel more. That's something I should do. And I should remember that goal that we had as a couple, right? Um, mm-hmm. and, a, and a realistic goal you can set up for your relationship is when to get engaged. Like, I, like, one part of this couple wants to get married, obviously. So, all of a sudden, if this goal has now gone out the window for you to get your motorbike, like, bro, what the fuck is wrong? You're a bad person is what's wrong with you. But, like, yeah, yeah you get the idea. No, um, this is absurd. This is unbelievable. Um, I, it's, honestly, it's super gross of, uh, this guy. I, in the comments section, they are just tearing everyone apart. But I, I do think this is a, a pretty good encapsulation of this I- idea, which is, this person says, why would any woman want to marry a man they had to threaten into marrying them? Be like, yes, no, yeah, I'm removing your privileges until you propose. It's like, I mean, that's awful. That's a transaction you're describing. Yes. You know, that's not a proposal. Yes. Um, I mean, the guy is shitty because clearly he wants all of the benefits. He wants this person to cook and clean for him um, without any of the commitment. But it's just it's a bad situation all around. You got to go. You got to go. See, I don't even know if it's like a he wants her to cook and clean for him kind of thing, because I I, I don't know. It, It wasn't established that like that's what is given on her end. At least I didn't catch that. I know the whole wife privileges thing was there, but I'm kind of ignoring that, to be honest. It's like. I mean, it sucks to say, like, oh, I'm denying you relationship privileges until we get married. Like, at that point, you're not happy. Like, you're just not happy. But clearly, Mm -hmm. your partner is not providing the expectation that you had in the relationship. So you voice the expectations or, you know, you leave. And I think the thing that's keeping her with him is sunk cost fallacy at this point, right? We've been together for so long. We've established a wonderful relationship. It would suck to give that up. But on the other hand, you are you have a very um a very wanted expectation in this relationship that you're not getting. And there comes a time where if they don't, you know, meet that expectation, is that expectation not being met the thing that is a um a non-negotiable for you, right? And you have to make that decision, which sucks, but yeah. It's so funny because they build themselves a method to bring the other party to a relationship status they want when in reality i feel like a it's a band-aid solution right um it's pretty much telling them you know hey i'm regressing here and if you don't do this we can't do this right we can't uh, we can't continue the way we are which is pretty much uh, uh what's the word um Lowering the blow, uh, softening the blow on a what would be a normal just, hey, if you don't want to get married, we should break up. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. just that's just the obvious solution. Yes. But, you know, um, Band-Aid solution is, oh, we'll threaten him with all these things. It's like, OK, but like if you had, you know, stood your ground prior and said, oh, no, this is non-negotiable. We if you can't do this by year four, I'm out because I need this. And so, you know, women tend to do this of a kind of they're willing to accept this like intolerable uh, happiness and they stay because it's safe because they've invested, like you mentioned, and it sucks. What is the the phrase? uh, uh, Permanent feeling of unhappy. What is it? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. It's it's something intolerable happiness, Uh, uh, some kind of like permanent intolerable happiness i'll look it up tolerant tolerable level of permanent unhappiness that's what it is thank, thank you. you that's it you got it uh but no that's exactly um, what's so happening yeah. here yeah yep yep i uh, and so you you kind of trick yourself into staying into these kinds of situations for years and years when you know the solution was on year one or year four or whatever but wait well i mean this is a pretty obvious um one but what if i told you a little bit more okay. uh There is an edit to this post. Edit. To all the dense folks asking me why I don't just propose, I have something to say. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Some people like things to be traditional. And he and I are certainly that. There's nothing wrong with wanting that. In our culture, in 2023, in hetero relationships, a woman making comments about being ready to marry is her proposal. Then it's up to the man to accept by proposing formally or decline by not proposing. And at that stage, the woman proposing is just embarrassing herself by doing it, TBH. So one, 
one, this rocks. Uh, but two, yeah. it resolves the outstanding issue. If you think that making comments about being wanting... If you think that making comments about wanting to be married is a woman's proposal, and then you make those comments, and you don't get the proposal, then he said no. It's he over. He said no, like, <laughs> dummy. <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta go. You gotta go. You said he said no. Oh my god. <laughs> he said bike first. <laughs> I got my bike. I do not care about he your ring. The bike. I got my bike. No. <laughs> Decision time. Where do we stand on this? It's time for voting. Jordan, is this poster uh, the asshole? Boy, that last little bit, like, I could talk a lot about that, but I just got to go here. I just got to say no. They're not the asshole. Danny? No, uh, you're not the asshole, uh, even if you're in this shitty situation. I say no. I mean, you got to go, but no, definitely not the asshole here. The council has spoken all right and that concludes our first episode this was a lot of fun uh i had a good time doing this, this was fun uh just a quick reminder if you want one bonus episode a week that involves some figureheads from our local community uh you could of course subscribe on patreon and we will be back next week with all new dilemmas if you've got some of those you want us to resolve please reach out we will definitely tell you you're an idiot uh, <laughs> any, any closing thoughts, any, any, um, any exciting things to end on? Um, I guess the biggest closing thought that I have is I think this is a really good vehicle to talk about. I mean, relationship issues. I love talking about relationship issues, so I'm excited to talk more uh, and dig into those. So this is great. I I'm having a blast with this so far. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I love finding these. I love deciding on who i think is you know real or not real and it's great it's hilarious all right in that case we'll see you next time the council has spoken